Welcome back, everybody, to another day of LCK Spring 2020. It's me, Valdez, with Lost Sight, a.k.a. Light Sensitivity. Uh, obviously, LS wearing some sunglasses today. Last time around, he had some trouble with the light, so we're hoping to avoid any illness or sickness that can come from that and hopefully just keep him here on the desk. So apologies for the sunglasses. I think he's looking pretty cool. How are you feeling today, though, man? I'm uh, I'm feeling pretty good. For those that don't know, I have an eye disease called keratoconus, and you can just look that up. K E R A T O. <laughs> yes. C O N U S. Wow. N U S. It's not a it's not a not a spelling bee, but we, I, we got that. Sounds right. Now, fortunately. Uh, it doesn't normally act up that wa that bad, but today it is a little bit weird. So that's why I have the sunglasses on. Yeah, it's uh, it's probably a one-time thing. I don't know if this is going to happen ever again. We never know. But uh, probably a first. Yeah. But uh, interesting that we actually have them up here on the desk with sunglasses. But either way, we have some amazing League of Legends today, guys. You do not want to miss this. We're going to take a look at the standings first to see which teams are up on top which teams are down at the bottom, and which of those teams are going to be playing today. The first matchup we have is Dragon X against Afrika, two teams that are currently undefeated yeah. in set score, and one of them will continue that streak today. And, you know, they're, they're even tied in points, and this is a really big match because we get to see Deft versus Mystic down there in the bot lane. And we're going to have Keen going up against what we assume to be Doron, most likely up there in top. And Keen has been having a little bit of a rough time so far in Spring 2020. And it'll be interesting to see today if he manages to turn that around, because I think it's going to be a very important thing, because normally people would look at this and look at it as Mystic and Keen versus Chobi and Def on the side of Dragon X. Yeah, absolutely, as those are the main matchups. So we're going to take a look at the point of the match, the points of the match, I should say. The winner of the match will climb up to first place because Gen G hasn't played three or other four matches, so I, I suppose that counts for now. Let's pick up 0-3 sweep. I hope Afrika can also learn after falling to us. Can well. Dragon X get their revenge from that finals of the Kespa Cup? And I feel like there's been a lot of time between the, the Kespa Cup and now. It's been about a month and a half, so Dragon X definitely looking a lot more comfortable and coordinated with one another. And obviously, Afrika Mystic doing really well is uh, maybe even an understatement so far here in LCK. And it'll be interesting to see how well he's going to do today going up against Deft down there in the bot lane. As well as the last point, Doron, he is coming out a lot more, so we're not seeing any mix-up with Chovy and Quad. Yeah, which uh, makes you wonder when is Quad going to play again if Chovy continues to play well in the mid lane. As some team stats here, the both of them obviously up towards the top. Afrika, if they have a gold lead at 15, they do not lose. So looking to get that strong early start. That's generally the case for Dragon X, except the one time that they did. And these stats, you know, a lot of the time, they're just numbers. They don't really dictate the way that the, the game is going to go. So we will have to take a yep. look and see actually, you know, what the drafts are and how they're feeling today, how they're playing. Dragon X with, with pretty insane team gold difference at 15. Uh, I think that's because Ooh. they've been crushing recently, especially in that last match against Tama Light. Also, a pretty got 100% gold advantage at 15 minutes. Yeah. of the time. And they win. Yeah, they win. All of those games. So, definitely looking forward to seeing what ends up happening in this series, as well as how are both teams going to actually end up drafting against one another as we just take a look at some highlights huh. now. Pantheon, Pantheon yep. showing his face here. We saw All In playing him up against APK. Now this match, this match for Afrika was not 
the, the cleanest match ever against APK. It was a 2-1. They actually dropped the game to APK, which is not, you know, that's not something you really want to boast about as Afrika, they're coming off of that win that was a little bit shaky up against one of the strongest teams that we have here in Korea. They have a lot to prove tonight up against Dragon X, who are looking clean, especially with Karia. Look at this play. His pike was unbelievable. One of the two guys to come in and get a win with the pike. And uh, he's this solo queue god who they picked up. He fits perfectly on this mechanically skilled kind of team. And I'm just really excited to see him get more and more experienced and get even better than what we're already seeing out of this very young player. Yeah. And today's, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing if we get another pipe game out of Kyria. And again, you know, I, I said this before, Mystic versus Death. This is one of the most exciting bottom lane matchups between 80 carries probably actually in the world right now as absolutely. it is the key player and for today. It, it has to be. Uh, I think absolutely Mystic has shown up now in the Afrika lineup. Everybody was talking about, oh, interesting pickups with Fly and Mystic, but Keen is still going to be the main carry. He's going to do all the work, and they're going to follow behind him. But then Mystic came in. He has played a couple of games of Ash. He's won MVP on both of them. He's the only player to play Ash so far in the LCK 2020, and he's gotten an MVP for both of his performances on that champion. Whereas Deft, you guys, I hope you saw his Ezreal performance the other day. He's kind of a god on that champion, and it's not only that champion, but when he does play on that champion and he gets ahead, yeah. it just feels like there's no way for the team to win. He can just 1v9. It's pretty insane what he can do on that one champion. So I feel like today, more so than any other day, we might see a bunch of targeted bans in the draft against some of these specific players as they are going to be coming out here right now. You'll notice that All In is going to be starting here in the mid lane for the side of Afrika. So once again, Fly not taking that main seat in the mid lane for this lineup. And that's honestly really surprising because this is such an important match here against Dragon X. So perhaps they have something prepared. Is All In just going to try to get a hold of the Pantheon once again? As they are going to be starting on blue side, Afrika. We are still in 10.2 as well. Yeah. Should be the last week of 10.2. We're hoping now, to switch over to that next week. Do we jump into 10.3 or do we go to 10.4? Good question. We might just skip 10.3, honestly. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure how that works. Maybe one week? Wednesday morning uh, in KST is when 10.4 drops. Oh, uh, well, in that case, we'll probably do at least one week of 10.3. You'd have to imagine. I feel like that's kind of been the, the standard we'd, we've had over here in Korea in terms of patch drop dates and stuff like that. As just taking another look at the lineup, I feel like Mystic came in and surprised a lot of people for the Afrika side, whereas Karia is coming in and surprising a lot of people that are fans of Dragon X and are just watching as it'll be interesting to see if he can keep up his performance. Just adding another carry to the lineup from the support role is, is not something you see every day. Freaking deciding right now what they're going to end up banning. Now, we know that Keen is capable of playing Akali, but is all in capable of playing her, and maybe that can actually influence the draft as Dragon X are going to be on the red side. Soraka, <gasps> first ban. Definitely a good one. Although, if you are blue side, you could just be the ones to snatch her up right away. So, definitely something interesting there. DRX is going to answer the question about Akali pretty quickly. Just banning it away immediately. Mordekaiser, just a good champion in general, sees a lot of bans nowadays, and also specifically for Doran. Uh, you don't really want to give that champion over to him. We've seen what he can do. You guys were talking about how he was the one who debuted it on his debut match in the top lane. As 
Lucian also going to hit the ban list. And Mordecai's are being banned away. In, in Korea, it's this really weird thing where it might signify a set pick as for some reason they, they perceive Mordekaiser to be good against set. It's so bizarre to me. Yeah, and we, we have seen that before. Uh, the team's doing that. I feel like no doubt they're going to pick the set here. Lots of stuff still available. We saw a lot of Orn first picks uh, yesterday. Yeah. MF being hovered right now. Gonna end up being picked up. Dragon X probably just gonna pair this with the jungler pick here, as that's the uh, it's the good old one-two that most teams have gravitated towards. As yeah, it's gonna end up being Elise. So, bit of a simple oh. champion here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh yeah. Here we go. This is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Getting it started off right. I actually. Tonight. Just talked about something just like this in the uh, the episode two of the Pog State, which oh, will be yeah. coming out next week, I believe. So excited! Looking uh, looking forward to that as Dragon X with pure sin right now in their team composition. Elise Renekton. Yeah, you can see it in their eyes. And Elise Renekton has been nerfed in season ten. Elise gets nerfed by the removal of catch up XP, the nerfs to jungle, the nerfs just all around. Renekton nerfed by the removal of Spear of Sojin. And the combo, you, you can look at it however you want. It's not as oppressive as people make it out to be. It, in, in solo queue, sure. In competitive, the enemy team knows what you're trying to do. They're able to play around it. And with Pantheon and Set both being able to be flexed, makes it a little bit difficult. Dragon Axe already not in a very good spot here as we're gonna move into the second pick phase soon. Thresh, banned away by Afrika. Now Dragon X banning away the Ash as well. I do like that ban against Mystic. I feel like it would fit very nicely into their composition as well, just to add a, a bit more engage from the AD carry role. Orn is gonna be taken off here. They do not wanna see that as Zoe gets insta-locked here from the side of Dragon X. And they're reserving counterpick for support. And I think this is actually really good to give Karia a lot of influence, potentially, inside of this game. Well, they took away the Rakan. Zyra Rakan falls down. The Ash is also denied. So Varus Braum is going to be one of those mainstays. We don't see any priority towards Senna. Any kind of Senna Tom Kench is not yeah. going to be on the board here for either team. Karthus, coupled with a lot of very good champions that he likes. Dragon X, they're going to have to decide on a counter pick. Will we see a mage? No, we'll see Senna. Huh. Down Senna there in support. bot lane. Yeah, so. The healing is really good against the Requiem. True. So, it's not the worst pick. Also, really good against the Braum. It's like playing against Caitlyn and Misfortune down there. Oh, that doesn't feel great. So, Afrika, with a really powerful composition, lots of globals with the Pantheon and the Karthus. They have so much more power inside of the mid game. Now, the Senna MF and the Zoe does give a lot of late game scaling, but the Karthus, because no one on the side of Dragon X can realistically itemize magic resistance, a lot of these champions are very squishy. Requiem can easily come in for 70, 80% of their HP <laughs> in the late <laughs> stages. Yeah. The very late stages. Now, the, the big question to me is, is Spirit going to first item Morel and Omicron? Because if he is Valdez, you're going to be solo casting <laughs> game number two. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, we'll hope he doesn't do that then, just for your sake. The evil forbidden book hopefully will be off the table. But 
At the end of the day, you look at the side of Dragon X, they went with a lot of playmaking ability. You see Elise Renekton, the ability for Chovy to set up plays with the Trouble Bubble. Yep. And it's kind of a comp that opens up opportunities to outplay from the jungle. I feel like Pyoshik is going to be really important in this game, trying to be very active in the lanes, trying to get Tovi and Doran ahead specifically, and perhaps even try to disrupt the Karthus. I believe the last time we had Spirit up against an Elise, he was the one that put down the wall yeah, to check wall his jungle. That blue buff, yep. Just to make sure there wasn't an Elise there, and lo and behold, there was. Yep. And if he hadn't put that down, he would have died, and the Elise would have gotten ahead. But instead in that game, the Karthus got massively far ahead, scaled up like crazy, and was dunking people by 30 minutes. And so we'll see how well Piosik can do. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on this young jungler from solo queue to come in here and, and make a dent in Afrika's game plan. Afrika, let's see what they can end up doing. This time around, their bot lane can definitely get a little bit rough. And generally, when you play Karthus, you don't want to be ganking. Just want to be power farming, XP gaps stick inside of the jungle. Unlike in previous seasons. And with all the laners being pretty self-sufficient, all that you need to really do as Spirit is just permanently counter gank the Elise. Invade whenever your laners have priority, <laughs> steal away stuff. Did you see the timing on that? That was actually insane how close Storn was to spotting it, but just barely not able to. Well, coming in there trying to face check it. He is yeah. going to see Set coming in from the red side. So they should have some good information that he was, in fact, in PO6 red side jungle. Karth is now also stealing away the Raptor Camp. Elise still on the Gromp. We'll see what Pyoshik's route is going to end up being. As Keen elected to open W here against Doron. And now, when you're Renekton versus Set, the level 3 is really important in managing the Fury in order to get a, a large enough advantage on a trade to maintain control against Set for level 3, 4, and 5. Ends up actually missing the Q right there. So Keen is sitting pretty right now. He had E. And, okay. Well, <laughs> well now he doesn't. Yeah, he's going to end up losing that trade ever so slightly. He will get three now on this melee. Probably going to end up running at him in about two seconds. Well, he's going to end up doing that as... I feel Karthus. like we can kind of just watch the top side of the map yeah. the entire time and be now happy with it. Will he wall a pain? Oh, we found him. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty basic check, I'd say, after invading the red side jungle, yep. just to say, okay, I mean, there's a really good chance at least to be here. I feel like the wall of pain check the, the previous time was a little bit more impressive, but oh. still a nice job. Those sticking Pyoshik around. Is, he's flipping a coin right now, and Spirit... Not even considering this is a possibility. Just ends up actually recalling. Very surprising. But I do suppose that he wants to get over to the left-hand side. He wants to get to that Gromp, as well as the rubber, or not rubber banded, but the respawning Raptor camp yeah. of Elise. So he's fine to give over that red buff. Does look like uh, what was going on. He also didn't have much help from mid lane because Jovi was Controlling that one, pushing it in, giving priority to himself if any shenanigans did go down. Karyo was also leaning towards red, so I feel like it was well read, if you will, by the side of Spirit not to go for that, just to play it safe. He doesn't necessarily have to fight at level three against the Elise or even to check. He can just sit back, farm his camps, feel pretty good about that. Really surprising, he doesn't actually elect to go into the Raptor camp. If he was moving towards it, I guess he would be standing still for a little bit. And with Pantheon's oh. priority, as well as knowing that Renekton was on a reset, just feels like a bit of a missed opportunity for Spirit. And now he pings that he wants yeah. to go there, but relative to Elise's root and Zoe returning, this is a little bit late. Still probably going to end up getting it anyway. Doesn't look like Pyoshik is actually going to be in time while Kane comes out. 
Yeah, this is definitely the riskier time to go for it. Uh, he is going to get all of it, well, most of it, not entirely the whole camp as Chovy still chasing him down, has the chilling smite, but no dice. He's not able to get anything started there. Look at Spirit actually heading up towards the top side, wants to help Keen push it in. Keen just wanting to exit the lane if possible. It also, in turn, gives Spirit a little bit of extra XP. Yeah. And it lets him hit level 6 a bit faster. So that's just a, a small thing there. Really big deal as well for Karthus, especially because getting base levels when clearing camps is also really important. The Lei Wei's base points are super big in accelerating his clear speed. As we take a look right now at the XP points, all in, down a little bit. Doron also up as well in that top lane matchup. Set about to be level 6 on this wave. And Elise not going to be able to find anything. So this is sort of what I was talking about in regards to the Elise Renekton. The opponents have to really mess up in order for you to just be able to run into the lane, do the Renekton Elise Cocoon thingy. And it, it's just such a bizarre appeal to pro players where it, I don't even know what kind of bias to actually call it, where as long as it works once, it apparently resonates well enough with them where they're like, yeah, oh yeah, this is what I need. Easy ganks, easy life. Easy gonks. And you know what's funny too is because uh, yesterday we saw Pantheon, or no, it was Renekton Talia in the mid lane yes. working together. And it's not Renekton Elise, but it's very similar because you, again, have a lot of burst damage with the Talia composition or with the Talia champion, similar to the Elise. And they tried to make those ganks happen over and over on a set at level six. And set just ulted backwards and then Pantheon ulted in. And in this draft, they saw Set Pantheon, which is a very similar draft to what we saw at Gen G. Yeah. And they were like, no, we're still going to do it. There was no hesitation either. They're like, nope, Renekton Elise is our plan. I don't care what you're picking. And that's it. That's the end of it. And that's a little bit disappointing. Oh, uh, okay, going for it. Superplex coming in. Keen trying to chase him down oh, it, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so, oh! so close. Requiem, no, uh, too much not, HP. Yeah, not enough. Requiem tends to deal about 204 to like 216. Mm. That's very specific. <laughs> if you if you have, yeah, well, with the Dark Harvest like stack. Like specificity. Yeah, there you yeah, there go. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Obviously, that one. depending on who the champion is. As, oh man. Ooh, Toby really wanted that kill. <laughs> Ends up using the heal. So definitely a bit of a blunder by Keen. Not flashing with the Haymaker up just to guarantee the damage as, okay, Wall of Pain. Jovi using his real flash there. And he's a, a fast little Zoe, able to get away unharmed. And right now, the, the very big issue for Afrika is that All In is, uh, well, <laughs> he's getting Lane Kingdom in yeah. mid. So this is uh, typically what we refer to as a mid-gap. Mid-chai, maybe you've mid -chai, seen. Yeah. yeah, you know, like the crab that dances. Like a chai latte? No. <laughs> hey, it's the same. It's even spelled You know, the I've never same. actually had a chai latte. Really? It's pretty good. Is it? What does it taste like? Um. Yeah. It's sweet. Yeah. It's very sweet. You know what, Valdez? Here, let, let, me play a little, let me play a little game for you. Okay. okay. Describe chocolate. <laughs> no, you can't do that? A, okay. A, a, a sweet, thick. Okay. Um, describe describe the color blue to me. Well, it depends on which color blue. There's a lot of colors blue. Okay. Uh, <laughs> give me give me a navy blue. Navy blue? Yeah, it's describe a, it for a me. a darker hue. Um, uh, of what? That uh, <laughs> resembles a cool uh, evening in northern Alaska. Yeah, that didn't really do no, it for me. No, that is perfect. Nah, that what do you really mean? <laughs> didn't, didn't really sit with me that well. May, think about it. Yeah, I'm thinking, and, and I'm I'm feeling disappointed. Well, you need to work on your thinking. That is true. I think that's the main problem here. <laughs> you, you really sound like you get a lot of solutions. Yeah, I do. Even if I'm not LS. 
Chovy is going to end up casting that ghost, coming back into the lane. And uh, we got we got some nice ping pong going on here. It's my favorite this sport. Yeah, this is uh, this is something. Ninja Tabai was picked up, by the way, first item for Keen. Runic Echo for the Karthus. Also, Spirit does not have Cosmic Insight. And Magical Boots on oh. his rune. And he does have a chance to take down Doran here with no flash. The Q is going to miss. This is so mechanically blundered right now by Keen. It, it's so uncharacteristic. Doesn't end up getting the the suplex into the lane. Well, this is pretty squishy. You have to remember that if you're just walking straight into it. But Senna from the bottom lane flashes to get that damage down. And the Requiem should take down Doran. As Pyoshik also in Art. a bit of trouble is going to cocoon there. But he is going to flash the wall. Double flash over and a double kill going to Spirit on the Karthus. In the jungle, Afrika taking a nice little lead up here in the top lane. And Afrika, they, they get these advantages. They get the Karthus going. That's two Dark Harvest stacks as well. And now the Elise is also, she's going to start losing her camps. This is what Karthus does so well that other champions Ooh. don't. Chovy can... This was a nice little play by All-In yeah, to get uh, that stun down. I think he might die here really close with the spear. He's going for it. But you got to remember... The Jumperino from the Zoe is going to get her to safety. And so, Karthus Acceleration right now is really going to start basically taking over. So, even if you put Karthus behind, he's such a fast farmer and he scales so well that he eventually just picks back up unless you're really always on top of him. And so, you give him an inch and he stretches it a mile. And so, Pyoshik going to be feeling really bad here. Is that Hextech Flash Traption? Tech that Pioshek talked about in his uh, winner's interview last time. Let me let me ask you a question. Yeah, in bring this, it, bring in it this down. case, um, is is there any case to be made for because All In kind of is losing? Well, well we're, we're gonna have to talk about this replay. I'll ask you after. So Spirit immediately goes on to Pioshek, who forced to transform. Dawning Shadow came in, but it just doesn't matter. Keen finally executing mechanically correct. Requiem comes in. And All In completely botches this. Not only does he not insta-cast the Q, yeah. he's a little bit slow on the W. He flashes over as well. Unnecessarily. Just, yeah, a, a bit of poor execution. Yeah, but you can see the strength of Pantheon. He was there <laughs> very quickly, a lot quicker than Jovi could ever get there. Uh, Senna was doing more help than the Zoe actually was, but... In this case, in the mid lane, because the Pantheon is losing so hard, and in a lot of cases, he's kind of just going to be supporting ganks as well. I'm going to have to hold that thought as... Never mind, Jelly is here. Would would there be a case to be made to throw Karthus towards mid to take a bunch of that farm? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just to say, okay, all in, kind of, you know, you're not going to be nearly as much of a playmaker in this game. When, when Let's Pantheon just give the farm to Karthus. is already this far behind, he's basically decayed. And I, I was having this conversation with someone yesterday. Well, I, I don't know if I'd call it a conversation. But when a champion that needs to get ahead doesn't do so in the early stages of the game, they do immediately begin falling off. Because they're always trying to get to a point where they're even. And even isn't good enough. And it is so unfathomable that they ever go from being behind to then being uh, really far ahead that they would like to be yeah. in order to conduct themselves naturally. Only so, in solo queue, and rarely at yes. that. Very rarely. So for instance, I mean, this this Renekton's a dead pick at this point inside of the game. He has the Tiamat, has the Kindle Gem, congratulations. He's gonna be the same champion yeah. for the rest of the game. It's just like Showmaker yesterday. He's not going to have any sort of magnificent amount of damage or wake up at any more uh, points into this game. Regardless of if he gets a killer kill too. Here. Keen is going to shut it down essentially by disengaging here. I think they actually had the kill on him with Karthus Requiem. If uh, they had just done the suplex into Haymaker, I do believe that they would have had enough damage. So that's a little bit surprising, Spirit. 
Oh, you missed that Q. Really good mechanic, by the way. You don't see Karthuses do this enough. You cast the Q, and then as the Q animation is about to deal the damage, you summon Wall of Pain. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. if you end up doing this, you get the pen, but you get more time out of the Wall of Pain slows for, for subsequent Qs. Yeah. It's absolutely the way you want to play it. So now that Renekton's ult is down, they're considering going for it. And at the end of the day, they just get the flash. Doran really not having the best time up in top. Yes, he'll get a slight lead in CS, but is that going to make the difference in this game? Absolutely not. Black Cleaver on set. You hate to see it, Veldez. You hate to see it. Well, I'm numb to it already because we see it every single game. Um, how many games of Tr Trinity Force do we have? Like one? I honestly two? have no idea. It was one or two. But it, it's just so, it's so disturbing. <laughs> it really is. It, it's genuinely disturbing how they can arrive at this being an okay build. And, uh, I mean, so far here, this probably going to have Sterix built second. Spirit now going to start the Herald. It, yes. was, it was the standard for so long that I, I wouldn't call it disturbing. I, I think it's just players no, 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 stuck, set. stuck in their old ways. Set is a bit interesting because there's been people that have tried everything, right? So, through all the testing and trials, clearly some people have arrived, or arrived at Trinity Force being ideal as Mystic. He's gonna narrowly He's avoid this. At them. Yeah. He has a Pantheon nearby. Not sure about that Grand Skyfall. Pretty far away. Now they're trying to keep Mystic alive. They will do just that as Requiem comes in. Jelly in a little bit of trouble here as Jovi. Could make the difference. He has stopwatch, but okay, he's gonna flash away. Jelly actually makes it away. Braum with the great escape now, considering going after them under this turret, but it's only Toby that is healthy and with mana. Not quite able to make it happen. It looks yeah. like he messed up his combo there as well. And Spirit is rotating down. Toby does have two flashes and a heal though. Oh, he's not landing him. Toby using fake flash there. Picks up another one. He's looking for it. Nice block by Jelly. That's what Braum can do. And Spirit, he never even came down. He's like, sure, go ahead. I'll just kill the mid lift tier one. Get a bunch of farm up here. He's three levels ahead of Kyoshi. Three. Yeah. It's 17 minutes in the game. And remember, it sticks. So this XP differential is not something that Kyoshi can ever realistically recover unless something just starts going catastrophically wrong inside of this game. And it's why when you have champions like Karthus, you just sort of, your laners need to be competent in their own ability to just go even and farm out. Yeah. And then because of the speed of this champion, he gets so far ahead and the enemy just can't recover. And you know what? At the end of the day, yes, all in got lane kingdom by Toby, but he didn't die. You know, he got very far behind on CS, but he kind of did his job in the sense that he didn't uh, give a bunch yeah. of extra gold away to Toby. He didn't go even, but he didn't get wrecked. He didn't get absolutely wrecked. And that's exactly what you're talking about in terms of importance for Karthus to just stick around and wait until that later game. And I mentioned how Pioshik had to do a lot early on. Well, he's 0 and 2 alongside Doran, who's 0 and 1. The two of them, the Renekton Elise combo. When is this thing going to die off, LS? Well, because it hasn't yet here in Korea. Hopefully uh, sooner than Morello first item on Karthus. That would that'd be a really... <laughs> I mean, what, what hey, he healing? Got he got Runic Echoes first. He did get Runic Echo, but you should just have the Leandres as the, the second item here, not Morello. It doesn't matter about the Senna yet. You can end up getting it in the later stages. I also acknowledge that Chovy and Karia both do have heal as well. <laughs> as summoner spells, but I feel like you have to put disclaimers on all of your. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean, Ch Chakra's you know? most recent video is uh, a prime example. It was on Reddit yesterday. I think he called it the Lost Shopkeeper or something like that. Lost. Losing lo losing two shopkeeper was the name of the video. Oh, okay. And it was just examples of, of pro play suboptimal itemization out of players, and. Every single time I see Karthus in solo queue as well, I've, I've gotten into many arguments with Karthus's uh, post-game, you know, why did you build Morello first item and stuff. And 
their argument is, well, so and so does it, and I'm like, that's not how you use your brain. That your skull <laughs> what is protected. What do you mean? That's I'm how 95 percent of people use their brain. That's not. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh... LS. Unfortunately. But no, I see. I see what you're saying. You have to think for yourself, be independent, and actually try to figure it out. Come up with your own opinions and reach the logical conclusion that one way is better than the other. As Karia will be forced to flash away from here, all in. Going pretty all in, but again, yeah. he's Pantheon. And the more I see this champion, the more I just love him in pro play. He's just all over the place. It's so hard to deal with him. Every fight you get into, he's just going to be in your face, either protecting defensively or getting in there aggressively and, you know, stunning him up and critting him down from low health. It's, it's pretty oppressive. It is. And he offers a lot of utility. He offers a lot of, con you know, control in, in regards to, like, dives and yeah. making plays in other lanes. So it's not super bad. And also, Afrika, I mean, they did lose the first two dragons, but now they're going to start getting all these other dragons. This team composition really just starting to come online and get a lot of value. Morello completed for Spirit, so... You know, you know, do you remember those old images that every time you do X, a kitten passes? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly what is going on here. <laughs> every time you do this, a Poro dies. Oh, no. Yeah, that's really sad. Or stuff. little pengus. Oh, that pengus Brad die. That's how you can make people yeah. stop. <laughs> As all in. So you, you've made you've made videos, right, about this? I've made tweets. you made tweets? You know. I feel like you, you need to get even more public. You know what I mean? So I, like I actually Shepard's think video? that Morello and Leandri, I, I feel like Morello has really died down in Europe. Because they, you know, watch this cast, they follow you on Twitter, and they came to a conclusion, I mean, the hey, other, this the other guy thing might is be right. A lot of uh, pro players, they, they even, they'll tweet about it now during pro matches. Morello versus It's like you've started Leandri. a movement. So I, you know I'm I mean? trying. Trying <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to <kinda, kinda> save... <laughs> The champions in the game. Equal rights for Leandri's. Yeah. <laughs> Leandri's salesman. I mean, yeah. you can buy it in the shop. 3,100 gold. It's it's not that expensive. Yeah, it's really not. Freak, I'm looking for a fight here, Mystic. Chipping away at that Renekton, who's kind of just running away. He doesn't really have an opportunity to get in here, but now they're looking to engage. Just pushing over the wall. He's going to take down Jelly, and Jovi might just be able to one-shot the Karthus here, but hey, They've got two walls. He's looking for it, and he Whoa, will be able to pick him. it up. Looks like a double up was the way to get it down as a big Requiem. Will do a bunch of follow-up damage, but it's kind of just desperation to chip him down. And They're going to turn this into Baron now, and this is going to be a massive tempo swing in the other direction as Teleport coming in it's gonna be from all in. Three on five. Keen has Superplex, but not a real... Viable target as Keen, yeah. Yeah, he gets in there, but it just looks like they're delaying it. Trying to collapse her onto Depth, who does flash away. Keen will go down. At the end of the day, it's two for one in favor of Dragon X, but it does stop the Baron. So no Baron take here for the side of Dragon X. So this will give Afrika another opportunity to come back into this game. But stopwatches and stuff of, of that nature is going to start coming out for Dragon X. Zanya's probably going to be the item of choice for Kyoshik. That's going to make a problem for the Requiem. Let's take a look at this again. Something is compelling Afrika to funnel into this river and then chase into the red hand side jungle. And there's no reason. Keen is in bot lane. All of the jungle camps are up. You have a top wave coming into top lane. And something. A cosmic force. I don't know which one it is, Valdez, but. <laughs> Look at this double up here. All in, essentially killing spirit. Keen right here. Again, not a, not a very good target to do anything on. Ends up using the R, stuns Chovy, casts the W right away. Doesn't have the ability to really stick onto him. Eventually, just brought down. All in does kill Death on the right-hand side during this whole debacle. So now DRX, they're going to be the ones to get the Infernal. And that team fight, it, it just occurred at such a crucial time inside of this game. 
where they, they lost so much tempo. Also, the Karth is dealing significantly less damage than he should be at this point in the game. Because of Morello. Because of Morello. Yeah. I mean, you also have a mid laner that is about to get Lane Kingdom. Or uh, about to get Flame Horizon. Yeah. And so that obviously feels very bad. Keen also with suboptimal itemization. And so the items are really a problem for Afrika. Their mid and top laners being so far down in the CS department as well. <laughs> is definitely an issue. And now with DRX also getting an Infernal Dragon. Things are uh, things are looking a little rough. Yeah, they're very close to getting that Infernal Soul. Just one more to get there. And there were a bunch of storylines that we were going over. You know, key players going head to head. We had Mystic versus Deft. It hasn't amounted to much yet in the game. Uh, the Varus versus MF. Of course, Deft has used bullet time a bunch of times. And Mystic has done a nice amount of kiting. But there hasn't really been uh, too much action between the two. The top lane was pretty tame as well, I would say. There was a couple of fights back and forth, and some visits from the jungle, but not all too much as the game has been steadily moving along here. Eight kills, 26 minutes. A lot of room here now in the blue side to make it a bit easier to move into that Baron, so it might even uh, push them away from doing that objective as well. But let's see, they're all grouping up here. Gonna find a couple of them. And it started on Doran. It's Chovy coming in and all in is going in there. They're looking for the Elise. There's that Zonya who we're talking about. Perfect timing. Now they're looking to turn it around, but the Elise is too uh, squishy. And in the back line, Def not oh. really able to do that damage. The set is just gonna put her in the grave. And Afrika finally find a team fight they can work with. Jovi and Karia alone thinking about getting on in there. It is a Zoe after all, but ugh, it's going to be pretty difficult. Can shell like artillery from the right side. But this is a couple of paddle stars. You see, he's not really confident. The portal jump in. He is going to go for it now. But this is a bunch of it. Not really deterred here. Are Afrika? They're going for this Baron, and they should be able to take it down. And that they do with the smite. Going after Jovi to heal. It's going to get him away. And they're just looking for residual kills on the backside. Might be able to get all in. Doesn't look likely, though, as five members of Afrika get out with the Baron buff. This is a really big turning of the tides here. As you can see, Doron tries to go in on to Keen Chovy, missing the bubble and all in with a really well placed. Grand Skyfall landing right on top of Kyoshik. The ultimate lands right onto Dev. And then the Haymaker. She got Betty booped. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way to put it. And Doron, not long for this world. And now the other thing about this is Renekton and Elise, they're going to keep conducting themselves as the same exact champion, basically, for the remainder of this game. Whereas Set will keep getting tankier and more durable adding more damage in, getting more utility. Void Staff is actually complete, by the way, on Karthus, which is a little bit surprising. I'm not sure how much MR Zoe, MF, and Elise have. Hopefully, <laughs> we actually do get to see. Well, it should not be that much. Uh, and I mean, Varus with the, the Wits End as well is just really good against the Elise and the Zoe, gives him so much value as well Yeah. in the close quarter combat. So at this point, Redemption also almost completed on Braum. And doesn't really matter what Doron's trying to do up there in top lane. Spirit, still three levels up. Not sure how close he is until 16. And yeah, Zoe's at 37. So Karthus is dealing true damage to Zoe. To Zoe and probably, probably to Elise Depp and, and probably Elise and Kyria. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so pretty much everybody. Yeah, four damage. Yeah, four champions getting through damage by Karthos. Look at Keen. He's looking for it. The suplex coming on in. The Requiem doing huge damage as Senna Ultimate not really able to get much down. The bullet time mainly blocked once again. Imagine playing MF against Braum and Pantheon. 
got to feel pretty bad, man. As they're just able to find a Renekton who seems totally helpless there. Karius is getting bopped down as well. Not sure why he's that far up. Looks like desperation at this point. Pushing in now with the Baron Afrika. They have reached a point where it doesn't look like a Dragon X can do much of anything against them. They are just pummeling them right now in game one. And you, you can you can see the Requiem damage because the enemy isn't allowed to itemize magic resistance. So unless they're willing to use their stopwatches right now, they don't have a way to really survive. And so every single team fight, Dragon X are basically fighting with 30% HP almost at all points. And that just creates so much freedom for Mystic, All In, and Keen on their champions to just do so much. Oh, it's be Mystic. They know Infernal. they're trying to steal away the Infernal, and they called their bluff so hard. Catches both of them in the Infernal. Afrika really putting on a show and stomping them from draft into the game. Yeah. And this is really fantastic. As Dragon X, they're probably, I mean, I, I don't even know what they, they could possibly be thinking. Probably not very much as Morello picked up on Zoe. Do you want to uh, explain to me what healing is on the the side of Africa? Or uh, Mystic has the Summoner heal. Okay. He also has he also has the Blade of the Rune King. Yeah, he, yeah. That must be it. And I do believe that Jelly. Oh no, I'm sorry. Mystic might have Triumph. So Jelly might be going for that uh, Redemption as well. Not really quite sure. I think that a uh, uh, Zanya's Hourglass first just would just have been so much better. As we take a look at this replay and just look at the damage. Toby lost half his health. Yeah. And it just makes the thresholds line up so well. When especially when you factor in the synergy with Pantheon's Q. Uh tell okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Can't people to see what they say in Korean uh, again. What? Oh yeah, well. The yeah. fortune no flash. People to put, people to put. MF no flash, MF no flash. <laughs> They're saying to get mid. Looks like Deathcap is going to come in next for Karthus. And when he's already dealing true damage to so many champions, can't really blame that as an item purchase. And Varus is just so big as well. Yeah. Has the scimitar now picked up. Every you can see the control wards lining their inventory right now. 5,000 gold lead, double infernal dragon. And honestly, for Dragon X, it, this is so lights out. As if we take a look at this, Mystic gets on to Chovy. Instantly ends up eviscerating him. Death not going to be able to do anything there either. And I really like this. Yeah. Like the comp. <laughs> makes me think of uh, Thanos when he, you know, dread it, run from it. You know that? Yeah, yeah. No, you, know, you never watched Marvel. I'm sorry. You're deprived. See, I thought his name was Thanos. Is it Thanos? Uh, I, actually, I don't It might be. I, how can I trust you with names? Yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> Thanos. Is there any truers? Or? Yeah. I, I don't know. It probably is Thanos. <laughs> this <laughs> one time where I <laughs> where I doubt you, it's, it's probably Thanos. I mean, there's K. Arthas in this game as well. K. So. Ar yeah. K. Arthas, yeah. Kind. Korean thus. Yep. K. Arthas. Alan in mid lane. Alan. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Oh, man. Mistake. reason, Alan made me think of Atlas. Yeah, let's call him Alan for the yeah, I'm just gonna call entirety him Alan. of tomorrow's It's actually, yes. Yeah. Well, you see here, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> or call him Alvin. You know, like Ooh, the chipmunk. Oh, the chipmunk, yeah. yeah. I think he'd really like that. I feel like that's 200 IQ play. Yeah, I, I definitely think that is that's quite good. a lot of damage. Music is not very happy. He does have double stopwatch. I feel like... Um, there is one guy on the scene that's like, okay, I know how to dodge this one, as Baron will go down. That just gets yeah. shredded so unbelievably fast when you have a Karthus with Blue and a Varus. Just the two of them alone could probably two-man it. So they take it down. No real way for Dragon X to get that one. I think at this point, they're just hoping, they're living on a prayer that they can somehow steal the Infernal Soul. There was no reason right there for Karthus to flash away. He would end up being up again before Infernal. And he doesn't have a bounty or anything that he would end up giving over. So 
coming off of Fountain, he has the needlessly large rod, so I could understand it if he was trying to power farm his jungle into Rabadon's death cap before. And thus, obviously, would still need to be alive in order to get that, but a bit of a, a, a panic flash for no reason. Out of spirit, Chovy. Trying to 1v9 this game, honestly, yeah. on this Zoe. I mean, it's it's kind of looked that way ever since that bot died. After the early game where Renekton and Elise pretty much did nothing, he was like, let me try to get the bottom side ahead. Oh, wait. That didn't work either. Mystic and Jelly uh, <laughs> coming in for a bit of a flank. We see Pantheon looking to grab Skyfall in here. They saw him coming, though, but he's so tanky. Take a look at Requiem. Gonna Whoa. just burst them all down. Heels, though, are coming in, but the hard engage from All In really trying to make it work. It's Phil oh! Gavin coming in keen, looking to stomp them all out. Senna's ultimate, not able to do anything to save him now, as Dragon X is trying to kite him down, and they will not do that successfully. As all five members of Afrika still alive in this one, they push so fast that the bottom lane minions aren't even there. As they look to push in now, with the minions that finally make it up. See Doran desperately trying to get the GA <laughs> out of Pantheon. Yep. And that is all that he is going to get in this game, essentially. Mystic, easy cleanse. Afrika felt like from minute one that they had this game in, especially after the game, the early game, did go so heavily in their favor. GG, 14 to four. As Afrika come in looking strong to start off the night. And I like the trap that they ended up coming out with. It's a really good way to complement the Karthus. Surround him with 80 top, 80 mid, and also a, obviously a physical damage, 80 carry down there in the bot lane, and it just makes it so impossible for the enemy team to try to itemize against. And you just saw once, once he got ahead, that's where it really just starts. The ball just starts accelerating. The double kill on top lane, that's where we kind of felt like, okay. Yes. And th that, <laughs> that's, right. the, that's the dread, is it only takes Karthus one kill to put you six feet under, but you need to kill him over and over and over to really try to put him in the grave. So they weren't able to do that. And even though Chovy had an immaculate laning phase and was doing so much for his team, the Sinner team composition was told to repent as uh, they did get purified here in game number one. They did. I mean, at least for Ecton. You remember, Set was first pick, then it came MF Elise, and it felt like Afrika was like, oh, I see what you're doing. We've seen this before. Immediately, Karthus Pantheon, without much thought, and then Dragon X just picked their way into it, picking the Renekton, saying, okay, I guess so, but... That felt like a little bit of a blunder there in that draft, as by the end of it all, Arthas is having a pretty fun time. Yeah. Requiem coming out doing insane amounts of damage. Not even the Morello could help Dragon X this game. It's, honestly, that was an inhuman set ultimate. That was really good. You Not know, every day that you, you he get He might get player of the game for that ultimate. Stop. <laughs> no, I mean, I think there's a great chance that he actually picks it up. <laughs> hey, man, you never know. It seems like a lot of the other voters have very different thoughts from what we think over here. We might be biased as it's kind of an echo chamber between you and I. So we'll have to respect their opinions, I suppose, as Zoe did the most damage in the game, you can see, but that really amounted to pretty much nothing. Yeah. I mean, playing Zoe and MF against Braum Pantheon just to begin with in a vacuum, <laughs> like... Even just from the start, just looking at that, it doesn't look so great. Yeah. And we did see that in the game come true many times. Jelly, I think, did a great job. He would probably be my number two for that game, yeah. honestly. Even though it didn't look like he was doing all that much, I think he had a great Braum game. Uh, even escaped down the bottom lane. So if he got yeah. it, I wouldn't be angry about that either. Felt like he did a great job of Rika, though, looking like they got on the right start here yes. in the draft. So uh, looking to see if they can put two more in this one and maybe get the 2-0 or see if Dragon X will switch anything up, moving to blue side after this commercial break.
Ah, no, 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 no,